Coming up, we've got a security camera with its eyes on you, uh, a brand new podcasting rig if you want to get in the business. Don't. And a couple of pair of headphones. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Nature Box, where you can order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine. Get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like citrus chipotle chickpeas. <laughs> to get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Welcome to Before You Buy, the Twit product review show where we get the greatest and latest stuff and uh, give you a chance to see it, give our staff a chance to review it. And so you get an idea of what it's like in real world use. We really like to uh, focus on that. I have an apology for you. We'd hope we'd had the HTC One, the M8 that was announced today in hand. We were not able to get it. However, we will have it for next week's uh, Before You Buy. I, uh, I actually ordered one. So... Uh, we should have it by then. <laughs> but before right now, let's get uh, Shannon Moore Snubs. You know her from Revision 3's Texilla, and of course, one of the producers of this show, with a look at the Swan ADS 460 HD security camera. Wonder what she needs that for. Hey everyone, I am Shannon Morse, the current producer of Before You Buy, and today I am reviewing the Swan IHD camera for indoor and outdoor use. In particular, this model is called the ADS460. You can buy this online at Swan A's website for $179.99. Obviously, it's industrial. It's hardcore, heavy-duty metal, so it's a really nice quality. It's also night vision, so you can get really good pictures and resolution at night as well as during the daytime. Uh, I would say this is specifically uh, the use case scenario for this would be um, maybe a storefront or uh, in somebody's office space, something like that. Um, it's a little bit more heavy duty than I would recommend for home use necessarily, but if you have your own office, you might want to consider this one. A uh, few things that I found that were interesting about this one, in particular, it can do not only wireless, but it can also do wired connections. So you'll be able to connect yeah. via WAN or LAN. Uh, it does have a small antenna on the back, but you can, of course, upgrade this if you like. It's just a little 5 dB antenna on the back. It also has the ethernet port here. Now, one thing that I noticed if you want to con connect via wireless, you have to use the WPS button to do so. So if you're not a big fan of WPS, like me, then I would say connect via the ethernet and just run a really long Cat5 cable over there. So when I connected to this on my computer, the connection was fine, it ran very well. I was able to choose my resolution, so if I felt like 720p would be too high, 720p is the max for this camera, then I could also cut it down to you know 640 or even lower, 320 if I wanted to. I can record all of the video on this and I can also take photos while I'm watching as well. Now if you don't have have it currently running and you want to get data and get a video stream of something that's happening back at your office while you're away, you also have the ability to plug in a micro SD card onto the inside. Luckily it does require you to screw it on and screw it off to be able to access the micro SD card, which is kind of nice because it'll keep anybody away from stealing your memory or stealing anything that you've already recorded onto that SD card. Uh, you can do up to 32 gigs on there. While I was watching it on my computer, my MacBook, uh, I noticed that color was pretty good. It was a little green during the daytime and at night it automatically switched over to night vision and it was very, very clear and crisp. So I had no problems with night vision on this camera. Uh, one thing I did notice though was when I downloaded the app from the Apple App Store, there were a lot of really bad reviews. Everyone said that it crashed constantly and they couldn't even use it. I didn't have as many problems with it crashing on my MacBook Air. Uh, the first time I booted up the program, I had to put in my username and login credentials once I registered. I also had to put in the actual model number and the specific ID and device number of this specific camera. It only crashed once for me and it was just that first time that I booted it up. 
So you might be wondering what's in the box. You get an ethernet cord, your power cord, and you also get an extension cable for uh, your power. So is this a product that I would recommend? Hmm, well, my pros and cons of this go. Pros, it is mountable, which is great, and it comes with all the mounting screws that you need. Also has the great night vision, and you can record audio, and the audio is pretty darn clear. On the con side though, when you're recording live, or when you're watching live, you can only watch for three minutes. This is the same problem that Justin Robert Young had with his Swan Eye HD camera. Also, I noticed that there is no movement with this one. They do give you that option in the app, but you'll notice that your camera is not moving anywhere, and you can also not use the microphone. That would be pretty cool if I could talk to my cats while I was at work and just like yell at them and totally freak them out. I would love to do that. And my last con, WPS. Why? Why are we still doing this, people? Come on, move on from the WPS. It drives me crazy. Buy, try, or don't buy. It's definitely a good price, it's, especially if you're on a budget and you need a really good high-tech security camera. And this is probably the best one that I've checked out so far. I've checked out some from Belkin, some on SwanEye, and a few others. And I have to say, buy, try, or don't buy, I would give it a try. Might be too expensive for your taste, so definitely keep an eye out for some of their bargain uh, security cameras as well that use the same application. Again, I'm Shannon Morse, and this was the Swan Eye HD Indoor Outdoor Camera ADS460. Hope you enjoyed it. Back to the studio. Shannon Morse snubs. Catch her every week on Texilla and here on Coding 101 and Before You Buy. Uh, speaking of Coding 101, uh, Father Robert Balliser, he's the host of This Week at Enterprise Tech, Coding 101, and sneaks in here on Friday afternoons to take over the network for something I've never seen and never will. It's taking the place. Isn't that funny? We got a priest taking the place of NSFW on a show I don't want to watch, so I don't have to cancel it. You you figure it all out yourself. I don't understand it myself. Padre has the MXL MMVE001 podcasting rig. What do you think, Father? I'm Father Robert Balasser from Twit TV, and I'm taking a look at a mobile recording kit from MXL. The MMVE001 is a mobile media videographer's essentials kit from MXL a company mostly known for its audio products. The kit itself doesn't look like much. It includes a mounting bracket, a Y cable, and the MXL FR310 shotgun microphone. The bracket starts with a clamp that can be adjusted to hold any make or model of phone. The clamp is attached to the bracket by an adjustable ball head that lets you easily adjust the position of the secured phone. A molded grip makes it easy to hold the bracket while two cold shoes give you a mounting point for the shotgun mic and any other shoe mount accessory. On the underside of the bracket is a quarter-inch threaded receiver for using the kit with a tripod or other screw-in device. You could also remove the phone bracket and ball mount altogether to use the kit with a DSLR or small camcorder. The heart of the kit is the MXL FR310 shotgun mic. This small unit uses a 10mm electric condenser element covered by a windscreen and outputs mono sound to a 3.5mm plug. The mic has a super cardioid pickup pattern and selector switches for negative 5, 0, or plus 5 gain, and minus 6 decibel 150 hertz roll off. A single AAA battery will run the microphone for about 450 hours under typical conditions, and the entire unit sits atop a standard shoe mount. Setting up the kit takes about a minute. Clamp the phone onto the bracket, making sure not to obscure the camera, mount the microphone in one of the shoes, plug the Y cable into your phone, then connect both the mic and a pair of headphones to the Y cable plugs. Calibrating the unit takes a little practice. You need to make sure that the phone is aimed on a parallel with the shotgun microphone, and unfortunately most phones don't have a level meter, so you'll need to record a test video and play it back just to make sure everything sounds right. It takes a little while to go ahead and get it calibrated, but once it is calibrated, it's as easy to use as your camera's phone. Now one thing I really like is that the super cardioid pickup pattern of the mic means that it's excellent at sound rejection. Right now I'm actually moving through the hallways of a high school in San Francisco and even though you can pick up some of the ambient sound, most of what you hear is just my voice. The MXL MMVE001 is available now. You can find it online for about $190. On the pro side, this kit is light and it's small. It's something that's easy enough to carry with you and then bring it out when you need to get that special shot. I also like the fact that it leverages the gear that you're already carrying with you, your phone and your headphones. 
The other thing I really like about it is this, the MR310 shotgun microphone. It, it's actually really good at rejecting sound from the back and the sides of the mic, which means that unlike when you take video with your camera phone, you're not going to get all that crap sound that tends to make your video less than professional. It isn't a professional kit per se, but it lets you get more professional shots, and I like that. On the con side, I'd say the first thing has to be this, this jumble of cables, the Y cable that allows you to break out the audio so you have your microphone and your headphone. The problem is that it always kind of looks like that. It's just, it's not really nice. I always end up Velcroing this to the side of the bracket. I wish that MXL had put the thought into maybe integrating that into the back of the MR310 so that I could have just less cables flopping around in the wind. The last thing has to be price. It's $190, which isn't a lot, but when you consider that you could buy the MR310 for about $130, $60 for a bracket, just really, well, that's, that's not a good deal. If MXL were to drop the price by, say, $30 and include that Y cable, then it is a no-brainer. This is something that you should definitely go get. But because of the price, because it would actually be cheaper for you to assemble the components from MXL, buying them separately, I have to give the MXL MMVE001 a solid try. I'm Father Robert Balliser with Before You Buy. Solid try from Father uh, Robert Balliser. Catch uh, Robert on uh, This Week in Enterprise Tech every week on This Week in Tech on the Twit Network and, of course, uh, on Coding 101 with Shannon. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of headphones in just a second. In fact, I'm going to walk over and say hello to Sarah Lane and find out what she thinks of the lobe dope. What kind of name is that? But first, would you like a snack? Here you go. How about some uh, Harvest Rice Sticks? Oh, man. And uh, uh, Anybody? Anybody? Lemon? Pucker? Pistachios? Uh, anybody? Dr. Morbius? You want some? All right, here you go. We're handing out bits of our lovely, awesome Nature Box. Nature Box is the best snack you can have. I know right about this time of day, you want to go to the snack machine, eat something that's probably not good for you, high and high fructose, corn syrup, or trans fats. Go for the Nature Box. Always good for you, nutrition approved. See, it says so right there on the, on the label. And there are no HFCs, no artificial flavors or colors, and zero trans fats, and it's always delicious. You can go to the Nature Box site, naturebox.com, and pick the items in your nat Nature Box, savory, sweet, you could have heat. It's all up to you. I like the heat and sweet. That's why I'm going to have these peppery chickpeas for lunch. Uh, if you decide you want to try a variety, they'll pack a box, uh, kind of a random box for you. But you can also specify vegan, lactose-free, uh, 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 no, no, uh, 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 you know, like what do they call that? Uh, the thing, the, the, the sticky stuff. None of that. What do they? What do they call that? Glucose. Mmm. Peppery chickpeas, delicious. Here's the deal, I got 50% off waiting for you. If you go to Twit, special Twit page at naturebox.com slash Twit, you get 50% pay, oh, these are my, I'm sorry, this is terrible. I shouldn't eat during the commercial. These are my favorite, the praline pumpkin seeds. Naturebox.com slash Twit, 50% off. It's not glu gluten, gluten free, that's it. Thank you, chat room, gluten free. Mmm, this is vegan. So go ahead, eat as, eat as much as you want. Naturebox.com slash twit. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> we are now going to take a look at a couple of uh, delicious headsets, earbuds for you. Uh, many of us have portable devices. A lot of them come with earbuds, but they're not the best. That's why we gave Tony Wang a couple to try and see if they best the earbuds you get in the box. Tony? I'm Tony Wayne for Twit, and before you buy, and today I'm reviewing a couple in-ear headsets that's both tangle-free and affordable. First, I have the Tilt Tunes. Comes in five different colors. Has one inline control that lets you answer and hang up on calls. And also, uh, if you want to have any voice control on your phone, you can press and hold the one button that the, the headphone has and talk to your Siri or Google now and in the future you can talk to Cortana if you like. Um, these headphones do come with a carrying case and also an extra set of earbuds that lets you sort of keep what well, it's supposed to keep the earbuds in place so if you're out jogging or running or doing anything active it won't fall out but in 
my experience with these headphones, they actually sort of pry the earbuds off axis a little bit. So I'm actually getting some, some noise leaking in. So the noise isolation is actually being hurt by having this extra piece of rubber on the side. The MSRP price is $49.99 and the street price is a little bit lower at $36. Pros, it comes with a carrying case. It comes with these special ear pieces. Con, the price is a little high and you only have one control on the line. And the next headphone I have is the I Love Neon Sound. It comes in eight different colors, has volume control as well as answer and hang up and your home button built into the line itself. Also a mic, so you can talk on the phone. And the MSRP price is $34.99. The street price is $13. The street price is $13. Did I mention the street price is $13? Um, these headphones also have a flat construction for the cord. And because of the material they chose, the, the rubber they chose, the plastic they chose, it's actually much less likely to tangle versus the Tilt Tunes, which has sort of like a grippy, slippery rubber that actually makes the headphone most, more likely to tangle. So it's kind of sort of the wrong material to choose for tangle-free headsets. So pros and cons for the I Love Neon Sound comes in eight different colors. There's a color for everybody. It's comfortable in your ear. They don't try to do any cra anything crazy or fancy with the design. The only con I have for the I Love Neon Sound is that they are a little bit large uh, compared to other in-ear headphones. So buy, try, or don't buy for these guys. I'm gonna give a don't buy for the Tilt just because of the price. And I'm gonna give the Neon Sound a buy because of the price. Tony for Twit and Before You Buy, and this is the Tilt Tunes in the I Love Neon Sound. The uh, Tilt Tons don't buy, but the I Love Neon Sound, a solid su thumbs up from our editor-in-chief, Tony Wang. Now, I am going to take a walk. B tilt, what did I say, tons? <laughs> they might as well be. Sorry, the Tilt Tunes. <laughs> Said <laughs> here, but T U N Z. Yeah, that's that's spelled that spells tons. Okay, the tilt tunes. <laughs> I am not going to attempt to pronounce the Scotch Lobe Dope headphones. Let's walk over to say hello to Sarah Lane and see what she thinks of the Lobe Dopes. Oh, hello, Sarah Lane. What? How are you? <laughs> what? Uh, I have come over here to the Tech News Tonight set. <laughs> To see what the hell you're wearing. Those are the Scosche Lobe Dopes. They are. I can actually hear you. They're not actually noise-canceling headphones. Okay. But they're, they're also... Dope. They're kind of dope. Lobe Dope. Isn't that a weird name? Yeah. Well, I actually wanted to review them just because of the name, because I wanted to know if they made my lobes feel dope or not. They kind of just <laughs> feel like headphones. You definitely may have to make sure that the left ear is... The, the left side is on the left ear or they feel really weird well for, and also there's a little l sure yeah i mean it, it, it's <clears> not <throat> a mystery I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what they look so good on me don't well, they well here's the thing they are a little silly looking look, wait a minute, let me see them on you but i have to say i kind of like the fact that well where's the l here we go i kind of like the fact see, that they look good on you they're so bright that they're kind of stylish in a weird way i yeah. kind of I, I kind of like them although i do like red they're 40 bucks though so the fact that they're not noise canceling is okay with me because i'm not paying two fifty three hundred dollars right. for them and you'd have to worry about batteries no and all that now and the kids do like very colorful headphones i noticed it's true. You've my, seen it more than henry more wears more. bright green ones skull candy all of these they, they like the the Headphones that scream, I'm wearing headphones. And even though, you know, if you go to the gym and you're sweating, these are going to get a little gunky. But they're, they're definitely going to stay on your ears. Yeah. They're not going to fall out. Right. You don't have waxy problems, which, <laughs> you know, sometimes I do. Don't like that. I'm a human. Don't like that. Also, I do notice there's a microphone. Microphone uh, for, you know, if, you're, if you've got this plugged into your cell phone or something like that. Also, there's no uh, volume control if you're listening to music. But you can uh, start and stop music. And you can also advance depending on how, how much you click. So it's not unlike the Apple in earbud uh, headphones in that way, just without the volume control. So that's slightly annoying, but 
in general, I actually, I've tried some like deep bass songs and I thought that they did really well. They get a little hissy when turned up too high, but you probably shouldn't turn your earphones up too high anyway. Right. So the or sounds, your music anyway. The, the sound is pretty good. The sound is, yeah. <laughs> What? I can't hear you. I have red headphones how on. The, how is it? Oh, okay. So how is the sound? I, I I do think that considering that the price point, you know, it, it says forty on um, on Loeb Dope's uh, website, but you can see them as low as about twenty eight dollars on Amazon. That's really cheap for sound that I think is pretty good. I tend to like bass heavy music. But again, that's something that sometimes headphones can't handle very well. So I was pretty impressed. So we always do pros and cons. Your pros? My pros are for the price. I think that they're pretty comfortable. I think that they look kind of cool. On everybody but me. And they, they look cool. You you look really cool. You oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> you do. You've like never looked cooler. An angry old man. So I don't know what it is about your head. Something is just It's off. wrong. You know what? These so, don't fit me well. So, if you have a very big head, this is not ideal. Well, that I guess that's a con. Yeah. They may not fit your head as well as they fit my perfect try, my try perfect, perfect dome. Uh, the color is not for everybody. They do come in other colors, but they're pretty, all the colors are pretty bright. And you don't have things like noise canceling or amazing sound. I think that you're, you're getting what you pay for, but I think the mic and the volume control is a really nice plus because sometimes you have to pay extra for that stuff. Yeah, I do like it that it has a mic. Not a volume control, just an on-off button. On-off, and you can you can skip songs. That's good. We'll so, go back. Uh, on the Skosh Loeb Dope, a try, a buy, a don't buy? I say if you want headphones under 50 bucks that are pretty okay, buy them. There you go. It's a thumbs up for the Loeb Dope from Skosh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like I had a stroke. <laughs> thank you, Sarah Lane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and thank you for watching. Again, we'll, we'll, we promised you the M8. We were not able to get it in time. They just released it today, but it's on its way. We will have a review of the new HTC One, the HTC One One, uh, next week on the show. Uh, I thank you for joining us. We thank our reviewers as well, Tony Wang, Sarah Lane, Shannon Moore's father, Robert Balasser. We do, uh, before you buy, uh, every Tuesday, come on by after Security Now and uh, watch us do the show. But you can also get each individual review on our YouTube site, youtube.com slash before you buy, or download the whole show at twitch.tv slash BYB. In fact, best idea, subscribe. That way you'll get it each and every week. Get your favorite podcatcher to a point to before you buy. Email us at byb at twit.tv if there's something you'd like to see. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you gotta watch before you buy. Bye-bye.